Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm Molly Fitz, but you might know me as Melissa Storm. I also write romances under that name. Um, this is my brother. He simply goes by Ron. Yeah. Um, I reference him a lot if you follow me on social media. I blame him for most things. Um, he's going to be offering very minimal, small assistance to the cat so that he can read his part of the scene we're going to be performing today. And before we jump right into the reading, I just wanted to take a second to say hi, make sure our sound is working and that you can see us clearly, and to let you know that I'll be giving away three signed copies of Kitty Confidential right here in the group. Um, all you have to do to enter is ask a question or leave a comment on the video. Uh, so I hope you're ready to have some fun. My fabulous assistant and friend Becky will also be here and she'll be posting some links and um, providing materials related to what we talk about. So I'm just going to check really quick and make sure, okay, we have an eyeball. That's what we need. Hi, Becky. Is it Becky? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I can't see. It is Becky. Hi, Becky. <laughs> okay. So we're going to perform this scene. I'm going to send my brother, Ron, Ron, to go get our cat. Okay. Go get our cat. Okay. So... <laughs> A lot of you probably already know that I'm owned by six dogs, and we have one long-suffering cat. Um, he was the inspiration for Octocat. Ron and I were also raised with lots of cats growing up. Um, it always seemed crazy that our mom had three cats, except for um, <laughs> now I have six dogs. So the crazy just it multiplies generation by generation. But um, my brother's working right now to bribe our cat Schrodinger. Schrodinger's a rescue cat we've had for close to three years, I think. Um, we're not sure his exact lineage, but we think that he's a mix of Siamese and Tabby, possibly with some Maine Coon thrown in there. Um, and that's part of the reason why I have Octocat claim that he's part Maine Coon, um, because I always say that Shroey is part Maine Coon. His full name is Schrodinger, but I, I call him Shroey, as does my daughter, because that's so much cuter. Um, and right now, um, Ron is shaking some kitty yummies. Those are little temptations treats. He's very particular. We have to feed him at certain times when he tells us. Here he comes. Uh, okay, say hi, Shirley. He's wearing a bow tie hi, for the video. Okay, so Dad, so you're not blocking the light. Okay. <laughs> so we put a bow tie on him. He's really happy about it. Rod, you got to sit down so you're in the frame. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just bribing him right now. So he's eating some kitty yummy, some temptations. There he is. Also on the table is Sky Princess, my chihuahua soulmate. Um, the rest of the dogs are with my husband right now, so they don't make a lot of noise during the video. Uh, quick spoiler for the series. It's not a spoiler, but it's a fun fact that you can know before anyone else. At around book five, six, or seven, yes, I have lots of Pet Whisper PI mysteries planned, there will be a Chihuahua based on Sky Princess in the series who can talk. It's like the best thing ever because I love Sky Princess so much. Um, but yes, Schrodinger's very particular. He, can I see the kitty yummies? Okay. <laughs> these are the kitty yummies. He will only eat these and Sheba cuts. Um, he doesn't like the pate. He gets mad. But he will only eat these, and he will only eat them off the counter. If we try to put them in a dish, he gets angry. Um, also, sometimes we have to try more than once to feed him because if we, um, if we give him a thing of wet food, he can decide that he doesn't feel like that flavor that day, or he'll eat a bite and decide he wants something different, and then he'll bug us until we feed him again. So a lot, a lot of Octocat's behavior is based on Mr. Schrodinger. <laughs> I see some hellos. Hello, Becky and Phyllis and Angie. Um, Sky Princess says hi to Shroey. <laughs> Who likes kitty yummies? Another fun fact is that Schrodinger and Sky Princess are best friends. Now, Sky Princess is best friends with everybody, but Schrodinger doesn't like, well, he gets annoyed by most of our dogs, but he loves to chase and tackle Sky because she's the only one who's smaller than him. Right, Sky? She's giving them side eye. All right, so remember to post some questions. We're going to go into the reading since we do have Schrodinger here. Remember, very minimal help from my brother. <clears throat> but Shroey's going to do as best as he can on his own to play the part of Octocat, 
the Talking Cat Detective and Pet Whisperer PI, Book One Kitty Confidential. And Octocat will be back for more adventures in Terrier Transgressions 2. And uh, you'll meet your first talking dog, Yo 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 the Yorkie. So, you ready, Ron? Yep. All right. Are you ready, Schrodinger? <laughs> He's, I don't. He's trying his best. He's going to eat you. Okay. He is eating my food. I'll have to make sure I work that into a book. <laughs> it's amazing how many cat behaviors there are that I still haven't run out of weird cat behaviors. Oh, we have a question. Um, can you please have a reading when Dog Eared Delinquent comes out? Sneak peek of more in the series. Of course. That's book four. It's not on pre-order on Amazon yet, so I'm not talking about it a lot. It will be soon. Amazon only lets you have your pre-order up for a few months, so... It's too early right now, but um, I definitely plan to do readings from all my books, especially since I know that the dogs will be way easier to get to cooperate <laughs> than the cat. We're kind of hoping for a miracle today, and part of the reason Sky Princess is here is, one, she never leaves my side because, yes, loyalty, <laughs> and two, in case Schrodinger freaks out and runs away, we have a backup Octocat. Um, Sky's very versatile, so she'll probably be playing Yo-Yo the Yorkie in the next book, too. All right. Ready to read, Ron? Yep. All right. We're going to be doing a reading from Chapter 2, where our intrepid heroine, Angie Russo, um, based on my assistant, Angie uh, Hegner, who is here, um, except for the Angie in my book has an E in her name. That's the only difference. No, no, Literally no other differences between these characters, so... Did he bite you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, he's really prepared. He's really into the character now. <laughs> okay. We got to try to get him to be more on screen. Is that why you're getting bit? Oh, I just, no, maybe I'll just have an awkward angle here. Okay. I have tree crumbs on my finger. <laughs> Christina's here and says she enjoyed Kitty Confidential. Thank you so much. So we're going to do a reading from Chapter 2. I'm going to pull it up on my screen here. And remember, Schrodinger is playing the part of Octocat. Not my brother. <laughs> I forgot to say, like, you have to do ventriloquism, too. Oh, I do? Okay, yeah. So he has to act, do ventriloquism, and tame the animal for the reading. <laughs> All right, Schrodinger, I think you're ready. Okay. And also, I have a cold, in case you didn't catch that. So my voice is a little nasalier than usual. <laughs> but hey, we'll go with it. Chapter 2. I woke up on the conference room floor. Funny, I couldn't remember passing out, yet there I was. My heart whomped a million miles an hour, but most of my body had become fuzzy and tingly. I tried to move my arms, but they seemed content to lay splayed out at my sides. One by one, my senses started to come back online. Pop! Mrs. Fulton's shriek was the first thing I heard. Then others in the room began to murmur amongst themselves. Some voices I recognized, but others were completely unfamiliar. Bethany said, It's probably time we threw that old thing out. Mr. Fulton ignored her as he rushed toward me. Angie! Angie! His panicked voice grew closer until he'd arrived right at my side. Are you okay? Meanwhile, Mr. Thompson mumbled something about liabilities and workmen's compensation. Exactly as anyone who knew him would expect him to do in such a situation. I was still trying to remember what had happened when an unexpected weight pressed down into my chest and made it quite difficult for me to breathe. The overpowering smell of tuna filled my nostrils, and the sudden intensity of it brought on a coughing fit. <coughs> That's easy since I'm actually sick. Oh. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> Gearing up. Yeah, I'm getting ready. My brother might die live, so well, that would be great publicity for this book. Okay. He's, he's ready. Yeah, okay. He's completely ready. Yeah. A voice I'd never heard before hovered over me. Hovered over me. <laughs> okay. Rod. All right. Well, how about this? This one had more life after all. People. Psh, so fragile. Oh, she's breathing, Diane shouted. Of course she's breathing, honey. Her husband responded with a note of relief in his previously panicked voice. She's also coughing. Oh. Oh. Okay. He's, a, he's in character. Okay. Be careful. Okay. In here, I thought, in here, I thought the car trip wouldn't be worth it. He's so sassy. That same unfamiliar voice chimed in, pairing the words. Okay, bye, Schrodinger. 
<laughs> oh, that lasted long. <laughs> All right. From this point forward, the part of Octocat will be played by Sky Princess. <laughs> Again, with, with minimal assistance from my brother. There you go. Here's Sky, you get the kitty yummies. Okay, make sure she's cat like for the video. Okay. <laughs> Here, since she's movable, let's. Okay. Oh, okay. She's starting to be struggling. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sky, do this for mommy. I love you. Okay. <laughs> Start here, Ron. Okay. And here, I thought the car trip wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> that same unfamiliar voice chimed in, pairing the words with an unkind chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> that was paused down, the best entertainment I've had all week. Finally, my eyes flew open, and I found a gleaming amber gaze watching me from a few inches away. Wait, why was there a cat in the office, and why was it on me? I struggled to sit up, but my limbs were still too heavy to lift on my own. Oh, honey. That voice drawled again. If you expect if you expect to keep walking, then you probably should have landed on your feet. Oh, I let out a loud groan. I could feel the activity humming all around me, but the only thing I saw was the danged cat, who was definitely intruding in my personal space right about now. <laughs> what happened? <coughs> I asked before coughing again. I think the coffee maker electrocuted you when you tried to plug it in, Diane revealed. Her shaky voice made it obvious she'd been crying. I felt so bad that my clumsiness put her through that. Oh, geez, this one's even stupider than the first. I'm really looking forward to living with her while the rest of the family figures out where to dump me. Such a pity. They don't know greatness when staring them in the face. <laughs> Good girl, Sky, you're doing great. I moaned and attempted to lift my head to get a better look around the room. Oh, who is that? I demanded. It's me, Angie, Mrs. Fulton said, squeezing one of my hands in earnest. You asked what happened, and I told you about the coffee maker. No, the guy who just called both of us stupid. I wished I could sit up to see past this annoying cat. But he was the only thing that filled my vision in that moment. <laughs> Of course, I had lots of questions about the coffee maker and how such a tiny old appliance had managed to zap me unconscious, but the need to identify the unknown speaker weighed on me much more heavily. A cruel snicker sounded nearby. <laughs> I called you stupid because you are stupid. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. The truth will set you free. Yada, yada, yada. And, you know, you got rid of the... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and all the other nonsense you humans like to say. If I hadn't known any better, I'd have sworn that strange lilting voice was coming from the cat. <laughs> this cat. Man, how hard did I hit my head when I fell? The cat leaned in so close that his whiskers tickled my face. <laughs> his unner <laughs> she liked that. His unnervingly large eyes moved frantically from side to side as if stalking some kind of prey. Oh, how I hoped I wasn't that prey. I'd barely escaped the coffee maker. Something sentient set out to hurt me today? I wouldn't even stand a chance. Oh. Did you, did you really hear what I said? <laughs> the voice asked again. And again, it really sounded like it was coming from the cat. Did he eat a tiny human or something? None of this made any sense. Yes, I hear you, and I think you're rather mean, I answered with a huff, <laughs> giving the best attitude I could, considering my prone position. Angie, who are you talking to? Diane asked with words that sounded unsure and just as worried as I felt myself. I'm not sure who it is, but he keeps insulting me. I closed my eyes tight, then slowly opened them again. The cat seemed to smile. But not in a friendly way. Once again, I wondered if he considered me easy prey. Heck, I considered me easy prey, too. No one's insulting you, Mr. Fulton insisted. We all just need to make sure you're okay. The cat smiled again. Bigger this time. Ooh, ooh, I'm, ooh, ooh, me. I'm insulting you, you big, stupid bag of skin. Just called me a big, stupid flesh bag. Can you really not hear him? I blinked half a dozen times and then pinched myself. Nothing seemed to change. 
So, I think maybe you should take the rest of the day off and a trip to the emergency room, Mr. Thompson commanded after clearing his throat loudly <coughs> from somewhere near the door. Wow, you really can hear me, the voice said again. By the way, hi, I'm Octavius Maxwell, Ricardo, Edmund, Frederick, Fulton, and have some demands. I was having a difficult time keeping track of all the threads of conversation. I knew the partners were worried about me and about themselves, but I still couldn't identify the mystery speaker or figure out what he wanted. Octavius Maxwell. Honey, are you talking about the cat? Mrs. Fulton asked, picking the tabby off from my chest. My straining lungs thanked her, and immediately I felt stronger. In a cutesy baby voice, Diane held the cat up to her face and cooed. Are you trying to help our Angie feel better? You're such a sweet fuzzy wuzzy. <laughs> the cat turned to me and narrowed his eyes into slits. Help me. <laughs> Energized at last by my need to find out what the heck was going on, I managed to sit up and look around the room. Oh, good. Now you can move again. Peters will take you to the hospital, Thompson decreed. Bethany sighed. Why didn't it argue the point? Wait. Tabby Cat trotted up to me the second Diane sat him back on the floor. What about my demands? I stared at him dumbfounded. There was that absol absolutely no way. The cat flicked his tail and emitted a low growl. See earlier when we had Schrodinger here. That's pretty <laughs> accurate. From deep in his throat. I know you can hear me, so... How about doing the polite thing and keeping up your end of the conversation, huh? What do you want? I whispered, but still everyone in the office could see and hear the crazy lady talking to the cat she'd just met. My owner was murdered. I need you to help me prove it. Also of equal importance. I haven't been fed in hours. Maybe years. His ears fell back against his head. Maybe? Good job, baby. You're so <laughs> smart and chill. Okay. His eyes, and his eyes widened, making me feel inexplicably fond of him, despite his bad attitude. Then the first part of what he said hit me, and I gasped. Murdered? Bethany tittered nervously and grabbed me by the arm. Okay, let's get you to the hospital. Hallucinations are not a good sign. But... I began to argue. That argument fell away when I realized I had no sane or valid reason to resist. Murdered! The couch. <laughs> the couch. The cat shouted after me dramatically. She was, off to, she was off before her time. And now that I know you can hear me, you're going to help me to get her justice she deserves. It's the least I can do to thank her for all the years she spent feeding me and arranging my pillows and just how I like them. Also, did you hear the part about needing to be fed? Bethany and I had almost made it to the doorway. That bet it was my last chance to talk to the cat. For all I knew, we would never see each other again. Of course, I knew it was totally crazy to assume there was even a chance any of this being real. But still, I couldn't ignore the fact that the talking tabby needed my help. I want to help! I bellowed back into the room just before the door closed behind us. And see. Ta -da. <laughs> <All right. laughs> great, great job, Sky Princess. Yeah, she did really good. With minimal assistance. Her, her voice acting is great, too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see me throw it back over here with treats? Oh, sure. Get his, uh, Maybe some pate. So there you guys have it. What did you think? <laughs> Was Sky Princess a good stand-in for Octocat? We didn't want to torture my cat, so since he was not in the mood today, we had to change plans. And I think there's no truer representation of of Octocat and of cats in general than his behavior. Kim says, love this. Yay! I'm going to blow my nose, so it's gross. I'm going to do it off screen. Just so. You can mute it. <laughs> Like I said, it was really easy to cough and stuff because I'm already sick. So that's part of why we chose that scene. But, okay. So we're working on getting the cat back. Um, Sky? Yeah, was a great stand Sky did so good. Are there any questions for me, guys? We still have more time. So I just want to make sure that if anybody has questions about the book... Um, or anything, or about the cat, or about Sky Princess, who acted as a cat. I would love some questions. I don't know if I'm seeing everything. 
as it's being posted or not. So let me just check. He's coming. Oh. Okay. He came back, really? Yeah, I'm going to give him some wet food. So we can treat him the way he's accustomed to. <laughs> Here he's back. We've bribed him. Kim says not true about cats and their ever changing attitudes. That's why it's so fun to write a cat character. Let me grab a drink. Huh. Angle the camera more and Charlie. He's the star. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. There he is. And all his wonderment. You'll have to tell me what kind of cat you guys think he is. Yeah, because we don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it was super fun writing Octocat and writing a cat that could talk as a main character, but was still very much a cat. Um, especially since I do, t I love all animals, but I do tend to be more of a dog person, specifically a Chihuahua person. And cats are just really fun characters. Right now, in writing book two, Terrier Transgressions, Octocat's still the star, of course. But we have a Yorkie named Yo Yo who's essential to the mystery. And the dog is a bit more of a one-note character because dogs are always so happy and positive. Um, versus Dr. Cat is angry a lot. <laughs> and very OCD, which speaks to my heart since I have obsessive compulsive disorder too. Um, so I, it was really easy to get into that Dr. Cat brain space. And whenever I needed to describe some of his gestures, I just went over and would like put my face close to Schrodinger and, hey, what's up? To get, and he inspired me like that. <laughs> um, Becky says, what made you choose a cat instead of a chihuahua? Well, I already have a chihuahua series called The Church Dogs of Charleston that I write as Melissa Storm. So that's the series that gets out all my love of chihuahuas. Although, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this chat, that around book five or six, I plan on adding a second sidekick for Angie, which will be a chihuahua based my princess. <laughs> Really excited. I already have covers and everything. Oh, do you have a picture of the cover, or are you not gonna show it? Well, I can't. I can't show it like this because I'm not sharing the screen right now. Oh, uh, Becky can no, cause no, that's private. Okay, okay. I haven't revealed it yet. It's okay. coming. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, the reason I chose to to do a cat is because I it's it's a very random faded event. I've got cat hair in my mouth somehow. <laughs> it's a very random faded event. Um, I was helping some, an author I work with. I was helping her out and she introduced me to co her cover designer, Lou Harper. And whenever I meet a new designer or author, I always check out their website to get a sense of them. And Lou had these gorgeous pre-made covers. Um, I ended up buying five of them and I was like, okay, what story could I write to go with these types of covers? This isn't like anything I write. This is a totally different genre, but they're so fun and I want them. And it took about two hours for me to convince myself. <laughs> and then I came up with a new name, Molly Fitz. And I said, okay, this is the, the concept I've written to go with these covers. Can I please have them? And I was just inspired by the artist's beautiful work and the cat cover in, in particular because the cat um, on Kitty Confidential is hanging out with the scales of justice and other legal paraphernalia. So I said, okay, how can we get this cat in a law office? This cat gets so much cat hair in my mouth, I swear. <laughs> You're not allowed on my desk after this video. Um, and yes, my desk is the dining room table. I have a desk, but I like the dining room table better. It's a very supremo desk. Um, but what was I talking about? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I tune you out on the regular, <laughs> ma'am. I was trying to make sure you want to knock this food off the bowl. <laughs> well, I got the idea. I didn't want to write a lawyer character because I'm not a lawyer. Um, I started as a pre-law when I started... Uh, when I started school and I ended up instead going with quantitative sociology, but I had, I've always been interested in the law and I was like, well, what if the character is not a lawyer, but works for them? And then I came up with the idea of making Angie a paralegal, but it's not her true passion. And everything just clicked together. And the story just like, man, because Octocat drives that story. It's basically like, Oh, he just growled and left because Sky Princess looked at him. Yeah. You can have the rest of uh, I don't, she, okay. <laughs> this guy's such a picky eater. I'm kind of surprised. Good girl, Sky Princess. Good girl. He also knocked some of it on the floor. That's why he's down there. But as I thought about what to do with the story, I was like, well, what would a cat do with the situation? What would an authentic, real cat do? 
And if I wasn't sure, I tried to approximate the situation with Schrodinger. Um, and as you can see, just like Octocat, he gets angry pretty easily. Oh, the dog looked at me, growled, <laughs> run away. He's actually a really nice cat. He comes when he's called. He plays with Sky. He, he tolerates our other dogs. He really likes new people and comes out to greet anybody who comes into our house. But he's still a cat, so he's still got an attitude problem. <laughs> Ooh, lots of comments now. I did answer about reading dog ear, and it will happen when that book is ready. Why did you base Angie off your fabulous assistant? <laughs> Angie wants to know. Um, my assistant also inspires me regularly. She's the one who keeps me writing at, at on track, no matter how busy I get. Which is partially true because I'm pretty good about <laughs> I'm pretty good about escaping and ignoring her when I have tight deadlines and I want to play in Photoshop. <laughs> But um, Angie, the assistant, is a very sassy, brassy Italian, and she often says she's going to go Italian assistant on a person if they're not nice to me, and that inspires me, too. I wanted Angie, the character, to have a little bit of that spice and fight, because she needs it in order to solve murders. That's a risky business, but I know that my Angie could solve a murder if, if there was a murder to solve in our real world. And hopefully that doesn't happen, but I know she could do it. I would call her. Kim wants to know if Schrodinger's a Maine Coon. We're not sure. He's a rescue cat. We think he might be part Maine Coon, which is why Octocat mentions being part Maine Coon. Um, he might also be a Lynx Point Siamese or part Tabby. We're not sure. Christina says, I love Octocat. I enjoyed his snarky lines. It was so funny when he was presented with a dollar store full. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I also thought, you know, there's a definite fish out of water aspect with Angie and Octocat because Octocat had a very wealthy owner to the point where she set up a trust fund for her cat and left a lot of her estate to her cat. Um, and he has this huge manor and all the names. He's very fancy, even though he's a common tabby. But don't tell Octocat that he's a common tabby. He gets very upset. Um, meanwhile, Angie is living in kind of a rundown rental house and likes to go to Salvation Army to buy clothes and the dollar store is her favorite place. She's a bit anachronistic because her style and music is more from the 80s, um, which was inspired by the fact that I listened to a lot of 80s music while writing this book, just on repeat. Um, and now for Terrier Transgressions book too, I'm listening to a lot of K-pop Korean music, so I'll have to find a fun way to work that in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's just, they're from totally different worlds, not just human and cat because Angie has a bit of a snark and bite to her. Cause remember she's based off a real person who has a lot of snark and bite to her, uh, but has a good heart. <laughs> I love you, Angie. Um, but yeah, active cat just, he's used to things a certain way. He has to do them a certain way and he's not able to do that. Uh, because Angie hasn't been owned by a cat before. So she doesn't understand about him being the overlord. Um, she learns. She learns. Um, and learning is part of the reason why we let Schrodinger run away very early in the performance because we did not want to make him that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Deb joined. Hi, was reading the book and almost missed the event. Welcome, Deb. I hope you're enjoying the book. Um, you can come back and watch the, the reading from Chapter 2 at the beginning of the video if you would like, and you can see more about my pets. And this is my brother. Hello. <laughs> Kim says the covers are wonderful. Thank you. Deb says, I'm through Chapter 7 and loving the book. That makes me really happy. Um, also, you guys, for those who have finished reading or plan to finish reading soon, I put the first three chapters of Terrier Transgressions, that's the next book, in my new app. So if you're on uh, the Apple iOS store or Google Play, you can type in Molly Fitz and my app will come up and download it. And the first three chapters are there. You can read them a month early before I'm revealing them anywhere else. Um, so you can search for it in the app store or on the website. There's also a web version for those who don't have smartphones. You can go to mollymysteries.com slash app and you'll find it there. My brother built that app for me. Yep. <laughs> he's my, he's one of my assistants. There's not a character based on him yet, uh -oh. but probably an upcoming murder victim 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking to me about that. So yeah. So. No, not in not in terrier transgressions. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe dog eared delinquent would be a good one for you oh. to be the bad guy. Because <laughs> rest assured, dog eared delinquent. That's book four. That's the one with the pit bull on it. That uh, some readers are very excited about. The pit bull will be a good guy, I promise. Um, but there still needs to be a bad guy, and my brother's pretty villainous, so you never know. Um, Phyllis says, is Schrodinger a rag doll or a Himalayan? Probably not a Himalayan because he, he has uh, a three-dimensional face instead of a, a flat face there. Possibly he could have some rag doll in him. Um, I'm planning a new spinoff series for later this year called Claw and Order. The first book is Right to Bear Charms. And my reader group chose a ragdoll as the star of that series. So there'll be a ragdoll judge in a magical court coming up. And I'm really excited about that. I think he's going to be a little bit more patient than uh, Octocat, but he's still a cat. So fun to have your sentencing resting on a cat. Kim says, the series is taking off in popularity. Congrats. Thank you so much. I'm having a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. I am more than halfway done writing Terrier um, Transgressions, and I just love the new characters I've added in and the new mystery. It's even more of a mystery in this one um, with more clues and suspects because we already know and love Octocat now. Um, but also rest assured that Octocat has lots of new ways to be a typical cat. <laughs> In the storyline, like when he meets Yo-Yo the Yorkie for the first time, he gets that big poofy cat tail that they get when they're totally freaked out. Um, and my favorite scene so far that I've written for it, it's not in the three-chapter sample, it's later on, is they need to take Octocat somewhere and they put a harness on him. And it's really funny because <laughs> he does not like it. <laughs> um, Kim wants to know if the series is continuing past dog-eared. Yes, I'm planning at least 12 books, probably more. I have so many ideas um, for adventures to take uh, Angie and Octocat on, and later the to-be-named Chihuahua companion. Um, Angie's powers, it still hasn't been revealed why she could talk to animals. We know she got zapped by the coffee maker, but we don't know how that translated into her abilities. That's all going to become more apparent, and... You're, she's going to figure it out, and you'll be able to figure it out with her. And book four is where the big twist comes. So dog-eared uh, delinquent that Kim keeps asking about with the pit bull, that's where the big twist comes, and you finally get to learn where Angie's powers come from and how they work. Um, Deb says, love the snark invite. Thank you. When you watch the beginning of this video and get to see my cat a little more, Schrodinger, you'll see where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my cover designer came! Yay! Yay! My cover designer, Lou Harper. If you come, if you watch a little bit earlier in, you'll see how your beautiful artwork is what inspired everything. I told everybody how I went on your site, and I saw five pre-made covers that were adorable and that I needed to have. So I decided to start a new pen name, a new series, and I came up with a story that matched your beautiful artwork. Um, and I can't get enough. <laughs> I, I stock everything Lou does in case there's more beautiful artwork that I can claim, um, but definitely super inspiring, and um, it just all grew from that. I love it when art inspires art, and Lou totally did that for well, me. And it was funny, too, because you, like, Ooh. like one day you just, like, you know, you found the covers, and then you had, like, a whole website set up. You had, like, an outline for the first, first book. And <laughs> yeah, I do things. I do things all the way. Um Writing as Melissa Storm, I'm very busy with those books. I own six businesses. I'm a mom, six dogs, a cat, a husband, a live-at-home brother with me. Um, I think 15 staff, and I just, like, I'm so excited that I'm yelling. Sorry, guys. Um, I just, like, I go for it. When I want something, I just go for it. And I'm so glad that I went for it and that I was able to meet Lou and say, it's worth doing all this new stuff. And just jumped right in with both feet because I'm having the time of my life. And I'm so pleased when I hear that you guys are enjoying the series too. Oh my God, 31 new comments and you do talk faster. <laughs> Sandra says, hi. Hi, Sandra. Um, another thing that a lot of people don't know yet that is coming is um, Pat Whisperer PI is not in a bubble. 
Blueberry Bay, the larger area, the region that is referred to many times in the book, is actually going to be home to other Cozy Mystery series by some of my best friends, including Emmy Lynn, Ari Muth, Essie Babin, and Katherine Hayton. They'll all be writing different Cozy series well as well with an animal sidekick. Um, some will be culinary, some will be crafty, some will be paranormal, um, and some will be bookseller. So there we go. Um, but they're going to be coming out and the series will be independent but there'll be some crossover with characters and places in a way that makes it really fun if you read all of them it just adds more layers and depth so that is coming people don't know that yet so you guys since you came and you believed in this and you wanted to see how weird I am in person uh, pretty weird uh, brother is weirder yeah <laughs> Fair. you get to know <laughs> Uh, Huan says she can't get it live. The replay will be available. I'm sorry that you're not able to see it live, uh, but when I'm done streaming, it might work better for you. I'm sorry about that. Um, Kim says she got the app and loves it. Good job on it, Ron. Aw, thank you. You can say something so I can blow my nose and take a drink. Oh. Talk about the app. Oh, yes. Well, we actually have three apps now, but yeah, recently the My Fits app is uh, live on the App Store and Android now. So uh, you get to read the first three chapters of Terrier Transgressions, as you said. And, um, yeah, I had a fun time working on it. More content soon to come, too. He's very proud of his apps. Um, in late July, Ron moved in with us, and he, I was like, well, you're my assistant now. I'm going to teach you things. So you've learned. I've learned a lot. Yeah. Tell him about some of the stuff you've learned and how amazing it is working for the most amazing <laughs> person ever. I mean, it's pretty great. I've, I've told her before that she's the best boss I've ever had. Sorry, Ben, if you're watching this. <laughs> Woo! But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I've learned Photoshop. <laughs> she's like, she's right there and she already wants to kill me in a book, so. Yeah. But yeah, I've learned uh, graphic design. I designed a lot of the ads for Melissa and her clients. Um, I've learned websites. That's pretty fun. Apps, I just threw at you. I said, we're doing apps now. Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. I um, a learning curve with that one, but yeah, we got, we got them live now. <laughs> you also are learning acting. Yes, yes. We did a little bit of preparation. I told him about <laughs> the line read. I mean, I couldn't, she wanted me to do a, like a British impression of like Octocat, but I just can't do a British accent, you know? <laughs> In my head, Octocat is vaguely British, like Tom Hiddleston. I feel like that's very Octocat-y. Um, but you know what? Yesterday, we contracted the audiobook with Ann Richardson, who's amazing. She's also narrated my Alaska Sunrise romances and my First Street Church romances as Melissa Storm. And she's really excited. And I said, just be prepared. You have to make a lot of animal noises. <laughs> and this woman is amazing because she's also done moose calls in some of my past books that take place in Alaska. <laughs> And I got to listen to the outtakes, and they were hilarious. So I'm really enjoying seeing how she does Octocat, and if she'll make him British or not. Um, if you've read it, leave a comment and tell me how you picture Octocat's voice. <laughs> it says your turn is coming. I don't, that's oh, vaguely <laughs> Um Lou, do you ever base your murder victims on people you know? Yes. Um, in the future, my brother. Yeah. Who is uh, Ethel Bates? Um, Ethel's just the kind of kindly old lady. She's not a real person, I know. Um, but sometimes a little bit. And a lot of times I'll base characters on myself. Like, um, people always say that my characters are so realistic and they really enjoy them. And that's because most of my characters are based on me, my husband, my daughter, or one of my pets. So that I can think, what would this person do in that situation? Or if they're based on me, I take out little threads and I make them bigger. So I have OCD. When um, I was writing Love's Trial as Melissa Storm, I had a character who was agoraphobic. And it was really easy for me to get into that mindset because I do have some overlapping behaviors that I just took more extreme. Um, also, Angie's based on Angie. So Lou Harper, I would be honored to kill you if you would like to die in one of my books. Um, Hairless Harassment, I think, I think you would love to be killed by a couple of uh, Cornish Rex cats on the cover you designed. You didn't know you were designing your own death, but uh, yes. I will contact you about this later so I don't get in trouble and make you mad and you stop designing my covers for me. Really? But it would be super fun to kill you. I do really like the cover for Hairless Harassment too. <laughs> I like the corn tracks on it. They're cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Look out, Ron. Your days are numbered. People are really looking forward to me killing you. I know. I can't wait. First you really. and Becky, now everybody else. <laughs> Phyllis loves rag dolls. Deb wants to know the timeline for the 12 books. Um, right now I'm releasing one a month. Um, I also, I'm writing some books for Kensington as Melissa Storm, and I'm really excited. I'm going to be in a collection with Fern Michaels, who's just like beyond huge for the sweet romance world. So I have to write those books for my contract, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, that's slowing me down a little bit. Um, but I love being Molly Fitz so much. I'm going to try to have a book almost every month this year. Um, I know the first four are already up for pre-order, so they're coming really fast. Book two, Terrier Transgressions. You can read the first three chapters in the app now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's going to be available on May 1st. Yes. So just over a month. And then book three, Hairless Harassment, in which I might kill Lou Harper. May 30th and dog eared delinquent I think is June 27th or something like that um, and I know I want to have them come out in July um, I might have August off and then September I'm starting my new series claw and order and then I'll be rotating the two claw and order will tie right in it will tie right into pet whisperer PI with characters you've already met um, that's all I can say about that without getting too spoilery. Plus we have the other Blueberry Bay series from some of my author friends coming that overlap and have a lot of the same fun humor and snark, um, along with lovable animal sidekicks like a Jack Russell Terrier, a black cat, um, a fluffy fuzz cat, and I don't know what it is, um, and a hedgehog. So <laughs> that's going to be a lot of fun. I know. It's yeah. not going to be blue. Oh. My brother's strangely obsessed with Sonic the Hedgehog. If you like Sonic the Hedgehog 2, come on over for a visit and you can marry my brother. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think this, I hope all these emojis from Lou are the response to me killing her. Like, she seems happy about it. Yeah, I mean. It could have been me saying that, I, that her art inspired me, but it could have also been me saying that I would kill her. Could have been, yeah. So I got, I'll have to figure that out. Gwen uh, has made it. Welcome. Becky says Molly really hit the ground running. It's been insane. But that's how I do everything. <laughs> it should be more and more apparent as you watch me that that is my approach to life. Is um, I'm trying to think of a more PG way to say this. Uh, blah, blah. My approach to life is to do everything your best and most enthusiastic. Like don't do something because you have to do something. You get to do it and it's exciting and you can change that attitude to make anything possible. Like I know that's so cliche, but that is how I live my life. I love my work. When people ask me what my hobbies are, I'm like, my work <laughs> and reading. <laughs> Those are my hobbies, and reading is kind of related to my work. So, um, Kim says, please continue with the Pitbull. You should continue with Apps Ron. Pitbull will be in more than one book. That is true. Doesn't have a name yet, uh, but it, it will be in more than one book. Ron, continue with Apps. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Octocat should have his own app. You let me know <laughs> what would be in that. Um, in, <laughs> Kitty Con in Kitty Confidential, <laughs> Octocat does get an app that he really enjoys, a koi fish app, because Octocat has his own iPad. That's important. Um, and if you go to my reader group, Cats, Dogs, Books, the official reader group of Melissa Storm and Molly Fitz, uh, I'm sure Becky will share a link. Uh, my husband, Falcon, linked to the app. Um, because I put that in the book because I get really annoyed whenever he plays this app, like obsessive, excessively and ridiculously angry about this app. So I decided to make fun of it a little bit <laughs> and give it to Octica. It's just so dumb. You just put the koi fish, they move around and you, they have to eat things and then they ascend into dragons. It makes no sense, but he loves it. And so does Octocat. <laughs> um, Becky says, Melissa coincidentally killed off Rebecca James, my maiden name, in First Street Church romances. I did. That was before I got to know and love Becky. It wasn't on purpose. My mom's name is Becky, too. When you write a lot of books, it's just hard to come up with new names. Um, I don't have a Lou yet, though, so I'd really, really like to kill Lou in Hairless Harassment. Um, also, if you're watching this, leave a comment and let me know if you would like to be murdered in one of my books uh, and how you would like to die. That would be a lot of fun for me. <laughs> so if you would like to volunteer as a victim, remembering that it's in fiction only and that I'm not actually that crazy, um, leave a comment and let me know.
Do you have like a kill count for your books? Like, do you? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I'm kind of curious now. <laughs> Angie would be the most likely to know because I think Angie's read all my books. Oh, oh. Um, uh, one person dies in Kitty Confidential. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, she kind of, she died before Kitty Confidential. And Terry Transgressions, two people die. <laughs> it's a double murder, so that's twice as nice. <laughs> Um, a fan says, I got the app too. I am the crazy cat lady with seven cats and more on the way. Wonderful. Hello. I think I read your review and I really liked it. I don't have seven cats, but I have six dogs plus one cat. It's almost the same thing, right? Um, so you're in good company for sure. Um, Christina says, I'm going to be busy with the schedule. I'm always busy. That's the state of my life. But you know what? I love it. I have so much fun. I laugh out loud while writing these books. Um, I'm so glad that they've been as well received by you guys as they have because I'm just having the best time of my life. Um, usually my Melissa Storm books, I'm crying while I'm writing them. So it's nice to be laughing for a change. <laughs> yeah, Falcon appreciates it too. She has to read them. And make them yeah, sad. some of my books, my husband's just like, I won't read this. This is too depressing. And he starts crying because I base things on his life too. And he's had some hard things in his life. Um, but he likes reading and giving feedback on my Molly Fitz books. He's always my first reader. Him, Angie, and now Becky. Ron doesn't like to read, so. I read through Kitty Confidential this morning. You finished it? Yeah. You didn't tell me! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I yell a lot. That's who I am. Um, we'll talk about this after because I don't want you to accidentally drop a spoiler. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Lou says she's up for the murder. She lost her ability to comment for a while. Fabulous. I'm really looking forward to murdering you. Uh, if, if you have any ideas, you can message me privately. Um, but for right now, it looks kind of like your two hairless cats did it. Deb says, what was the name of the reader group again? Becky shared that link. Um, it's Cats, Dogs, Books, the official reader group of Melissa Storm and Molly Fitz. Doesn't that have the Right to Bear Charms cover, too, that you want to check Yes, out? if you want to see my rag doll cover. Um, also, my five-year-old daughter, Phoenix, made a documentary of our life this morning with really, really unflattering footage of me and the house. Uh, but it was so cute, her narration, that I posted it in my group. <laughs> so if you want to see it, it's there. Um, Deb says I can murder her. Oh. We'll have to remember that. <laughs> Ballard's a good name. I feel like I could murder you in a very musical way because it's almost like Ballard. Or in a very duck way because it's almost like Mallard. There's there's possibilities there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you don't have any ducks in your books yet, so I mean I do, I need ducks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Deb has four cats. Awesome. Huan wants to be uh killed, smothered by her cats. That's a great idea. I like that. Uh Kiss a poison frog is how we wants to die. Okay, um, so you might need to be murdered more than once because uh, that doesn't really work for Pot Whisperer PI, which is very based in reality. But when we get to my new series, Claw and Order, which is a bit more uh, fantasy setting, totally kill you that way, Lou. I would love to. Okay. Are there more questions, comments, things you guys want to talk about? It said I had like 30 new comments, but I think I just cut. I just catched up. I catched up. I caught up. I caught up. Um, hope it gets Sky. Oh, show Sky. Show Sky. Yeah, she looks so sweet. This is uh, Schrodinger's blanket, too. Sky, you did such a good job being the cat. You did, you did a really nice job, Sky Princess. I know she, she shows up on camera, too, while well. the lighting isn't good. <laughs> she did so good. You did so good, Sky Princess. Who's the Sky Princess? She looks very concerned right now. Who's the Sky Princess? <laughs> She's like, I'm a sky princess. I wish Mila was here to draw how sassy she is. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming and joining us and for getting excited about this book and this series. Um, sorry if I yelled in your ear. Uh, just take it as my enthusiasm. I will definitely be coming back to the comments to get my murder victims in upcoming books. Thank you for being so willing um, <laughs> to join the freak show. Um, and I'm also going to go through the comments and pick three people to win signed copies of Kitty Confidential. Thank you so much again for being here. Make sure to check out the links Becky shared as we were talking. My reader group, my app, upcoming books. Um, you can sign up for my newsletter. My website is mollymysteries.com. And I promise that everything I write as Molly Fitz will be equally weird. 
to Kitty Confidential because that's the fun part. So thank you again, guys, and have a great rest of your weekend. Bye. Uh, oh, bye. <laughs> Closing comments. Get the app. You're not allowed to kill people. You're not a writer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. If my brother decides to write, we'll be back and have some murder victims for him. <laughs> so thank you again. Bye, guys.